Hello, this is Phil Misk for Subbase Academy with a quick run through some of the differences in Ableton Live 9's browser section. So, on the left hand side, it's one of the first things you'll notice when you install Ableton Live 9 that there are some different places that you didn't see previously if you're used to 8 or 7 or previous. So, you've got the sound section, which is every single sound you've got in Ableton listed here on the left hand side. You've got your drum section, which also does exactly what it says on the tin. And you've got an instrument section, which is all your analog collision everything that comes with your Ableton whether you've got suite or the regular version will be listed here and one of the interesting things in Ableton Live 9 if you expand these instruments you'll see the presets like you did previously but instead of having to load them in like you previously did drag them in here have a listen or a play I can actually just click on this and get an audio preview for the preset without actually having to load it in which saves a lot of time, as you know. If you're at that one of those 3 a.m. sessions, you know, you, you've got a good riff that you know will work. You've just got to get a different sound in there. You can just go up and hot swap through all those presets and know whether it's going to fit or not without going to the hassle of loading it in. So audio effects are your regular Ableton effects. MIDI effects are some of the great things about Ableton is how to affect your actual MIDI patterns. Max for Live. Now, this is interesting. If you've got the sweet version of Ableton Live 9, Max for Live comes built in infinite different instruments and effects then at your disposal. As you know, the Max user community grows and grows every day. Really worth checking out if you've got the time. The plugin section is all your third party plugins on the left hand side. Your clip section is every single clip that you've had in Ableton previously. It's got a bunch of demo clips which you can use to load in for your own sets. And any ones that you do make that you know you're going to come back to later, you can just drag a riff in there and save it for you know, your arsenal whenever you need it. Your sample section grows with you as you use Ableton. Every single sample you're using in your Ableton sets is going to be listed in here. And that's where the search function comes in very handy. Now, if you remember the search function in Ableton Live 8 and 7 wasn't really that good. It was very in-depth, but it was actually quite slow and could often, if you had a, a huge hard drive, just kind of grind things to a halt while it, it stopped the search for something you'd, you'd search for. So, now it works quite like the automatic indexing that works on your, your Mac file system or in Windows 7 and 8. So if you click up and search here, let's say I want to search in my own samples folder. Click up here, type uh, Apache. And it'll tell me I've got Apache in two different areas on my hard drive. I've got one in drums and in vocals. So I know I want to search for the Apache drum loop. So chances are it's in here. Open it up. In drums, it's in loops. In loops, there's a sample called Apache. Okay, there you go. So down here, we've got the places section. Places is your more user definable area of the browser. So you've got the packs here that you can install from Ableton themselves and third party producers. You've got the user library, which is any kind of presets that you've made in Ableton Live Instruments or instrument racks you might have made, effect racks and the like. Your Live 8 library automatically gets ported into Ableton Live 9 if you've previously had Ableton 8, which is very handy. Current project just lets you search in your own project that you've got currently running. So if you've got a massive project with, you know, 50, 60 tracks in it, and you're trying to find some little audio snippet you use, instead of having to look through the entire file, just go up here and do a quick search, and you'll find it very quickly. Now, you'll see I've got a bunch of user folders down here. Unlike previous versions of Ableton, where you only had the option to have one, two, or three hot folders, you can now have as many as you like. I can click here, remove this from sidebar, add folder, add it back again. If I know I'm going to be using that folder a lot, say I've got you know some risers, different sample packs, all my samples on my, my folder. If I want this drums folder as a separate one, I'll just drop it in here. I've got my drums folder now. So it's very handy for doing some quick workflow in Ableton you can just drop whatever you think you'll need right there and then and you know get rid of it if you don't think you're going to use it again. Below here we've got the groove pool which you'll know and love. Now thank god Ableton have brought back the global groove amount due to popular demand is back in there so everybody who likes their swing and a bit of funk to their rhythms can breathe a sigh of relief it's back. And everything is pretty much similar to previous versions. You'll notice a few changes up here in the transport bar. These I'm going to get into it a little more detail later. It's the all new clip automation function in session view, which is pretty exciting. 
uh, but I'll get into a bit more in depth later because it'll make a lot more sense. All right, thanks very much. So check out the other Ableton 9 tutorials, which I'll detail all the other exciting features in Ableton Live 9, which you're gonna love. Go, go.